Hey guys, this is Mr. O'Brien here again. And in this video, we're going to be talking about genetic engineering and what impact that it has in medicine, forensics, and agriculture. So when we're talking about genetic engineering, we're talking about how humans can alter DNA in order to produce some sort of new product. So the first thing when we're talking about genetic engineering, and this is the first thing, like genetic engineering has been around forever. Humans have been genetic engineering organisms as long as human history has existed. Now, they, always, they haven't been doing it in terms of cutting DNA or things like that. They've been doing, doing it through a process called selective breeding. So selective breeding is also called artificial selection is allowing only those animals or plants with desired characteristics to produce the next generation. This is used to produce plants or animals with desired traits, and farmers have been doing this for decades. Now, humans do this with plants, do this with animals, and one of the animals I always like to use as an example is the domestic dog. Every single dog on the face of the earth has actually been bred from the wolf. So, in other words, they breed characteristics that they want to be present in the next generation, and over millions of years, we've get, gotten the different dog breeds to occur. So, again, humans use, again, and this is a key point here, humans use selective breeding to pass their desired traits onto the next generation of organisms. So, purebred, bro, uh, excuse me, purebred dogs, domestic livestock, which are bigger, have more meat, all have been domestically bred in order to produce a desired trait. Now, another thing that you're probably not aware of is that we have actually genetically engineered through selective breeding corn. Corn or maize in the early time frame was just a weed. So what they've done over the millions of years is they've bred the biggest kernels, the biggest cobs, until eventually we have the modern corn that we know today. Another thing that has been selectively breeded for is wild mustard. Now, wild mustard doesn't sound like something you would want to eat, but wild mustard has been selectively breeded through millions of years to produce a lot of things. Kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and cauliflower. And each one of them has been bred for a particular thing. Uh, kale for the leaves, broccoli for the flowers and the buds, Brussels sprouts for the lateral leaf buds, cabbage for the terminal leaf bud, and cauliflower for the flower bud. So again, they selectively breed at different parts to get a different vegetable. So genetic engineering, also called recombinant DNA technology, involves the group of techniques used to cut up and join together genetic material, especially DNA from different biological species, and to introduce the resulting hybrid DNA into an organism in order to form a new combination of genetic traits. So the way that we always think about this is like this. So in other words, we're cutting our DNA and we're inserting a gene that can be better. So the best example we have of this that we actually use is a process called gene splicing. So gene splicing is a technology that allows researchers to insert new genes into existing genetic material of an organism, genome, so that the entire traits um, form disease resistance to vitamins and can be copied from one organism to another. So, in other words, if this is our segment of bacteria DNA, what we're going to try to do is put a piece of human DNA that's going to code for a particular trait there. So, the way that we do this is we start with a restrictor enzyme. And a restrictor enzyme cuts the DNA at a specific point. So, here is our restrictor enzyme. It's going to cut it at that location and open it up. These two things are called sticky ends because our DNA is going to stick to them. We then take that recombinant piece of DNA and we paste it into the other organism. Again, so we're going to paste it into here so that we have a new complete strand of our DNA there. We then insert it into a bacteria so that it can produce whatever gene we want it to. 
So why would humans want to do this? Well, the best example that we have of why humans want to do this is actually um, insulin. So a diabetic individual can't produce his own insulin, so they need to inject themselves with it in order to survive. So recombinant DNA provides a way to manufacture proteins like insulin or antibodies quickly and in large quantities so these proteins can be used to treat patients that can't manufacture their own. So in other words, we take that plasma to that DNA sequence out of the bacteria and we use the restrictor enzyme to cut the two ends. We then insert the human insulin gene back into that plasmid and reseal it back up. We then put that genetically modified bacterium into a location where it's able to reproduce and make millions of copies of that bacteria. And as they're doing that, they're producing, in a big bat, our insulin. We purify it, and then that insulin is ready to be distributed uh, for individuals to use. So this isn't always just like science, science fiction type stuff. This is how insulin is able to be produced at an affordable rate for organisms to survive. Now, we also have the ability to make what are known as clones, and clones are just genetically identical organisms or cells produced from a single cell. Now, throughout human history, one of the most um, well-known clones is Dolly the sheep. And Dolly the sheep was actually a clone and how they did that is they took a cell from the sheep and what they did is they uh, the nucleus was removed and added to an egg cell. So when that egg cell was combined with a new nucleus, it was able to um, replicate and then that replication formed into the developing of a new embryo, which was our cloned Dolly the sheep. So again, this is just the process of removing the nucleus, putting it into a new um, new egg cell and allowing it to reproduce, but it's the same genetic material as the organism the nucleus came from. So another thing that we have in genetic engineering is genetically modified crops. Now genetically modified crops are kind of a wishy-washy ground. A lot of people, because it says genetically modified, they don't want to eat it. Even though genetically modified sometimes means better for you. So genetically modified organisms are organisms that contain a gene from other organisms. So here, this is actually our genetically modified organism corn. This one is our normal corn. And what happens is the normal corn is actually susceptible to a parasite that actually eats it. The genetically modified one, we inserted a gene that actually stops that organism from eating it. So genetically modified crops generally include resistance to certain pests, diseases, or environmental conditions like drought. Drought's actually a very big one in the corn population, or even resistance to chemical treatment so that they don't die. Other purposes of genetically modified crops is to enhance its nutritional value. So by enhancing its nutritional value, we can feed more individuals, which means we are reducing the hunger problem that we have in this world. So some very common genetically modified organism, golden rice. Uh, this was rice that was modified with a daffodil gene to have more, uh, more beta carotene. And what that does is that allows our body to convert it to vitamin A. Okay, we also have genetically modified tomatoes. Uh, this tomato uh, modified by removing a gene responsible for the softening of the fruit meaning that they last longer <clears throat> and more people can eat them a longer period of time. BT corn, that's the picture I showed you before, corn modified with bacteria insecticide genes so that it produces insect toxins within its cells. And then we can also do it to salmon. Salmon, we made them bigger. And then sometimes we just do it for fun, glowing dark animals like you see down here. Again, that has no beneficial value, but they wanted to see if they can do it and they were able to do it. Now, one way sometimes humans need to be cured is through a process called gene therapy. So gene therapy is a process of attempting to cure genetic disorders by placing copies of healthy genes into cells that lack them. So sometimes 
individuals are sick. So what they do is they take a gene or a segment of a DNA that codes for the protein to cure them, and we actually insert it into a virus. And that virus is then injected into our body. And when that virus attacks our cells, it actually injects the target DNA into our cells that allow our body to produce the thing that we are lacking. So again, this is, a, this is commonly done, um, but again, it's gene therapy is a way to cure some genetic disorders. Now, one of the most common ones that you probably have seen on TV is DNA fingerprinting. So CSI, or crime scene investigation shows, always show you DNA fingerprinting and how they use that to solve crimes. So DNA fingerprinting, we're cutting and separating DNA at a specific segment. So repeats in the genetic code that are unique to individuals can be compared for the purpose of the identification. So if we start here, the shorter the sequence, the longer it travels. The longer the sequence, the shorter it travels. So in other words, where these sequences are broken up are specific to the human individual. So if you look, if this was DNA found at the crime scene, we can pair the banding patterns to the suspect, number two, which it matches, to maybe convict them of a crime. So if I look here, which two samples might be from a set of identical twins? Now remember, identical twins means they have the same DNA. So same DNA, most likely, I'd say sample one and, oop, not sample three, sample four have the same banding pattern. Therefore, those are the twins. One and four. So hopefully this helps you out uh, with genetic engineering, how it affects medicine, how it affects agriculture, and how it affects our lives that we live in. Hopefully this helps you 